Hello, my name is Callie Binkowski, and I am an academic technologist at the College of Biological Sciences. We are experiencing some extreme weather here in Minnesota, so I wanted to show you how to host your class with a live virtual meeting. My thanks to Shauna Crossan from the College of Liberal Arts for helping me work out all the details for this tutorial. For this instructional video, we will schedule a meeting using WebEx and provide instructions for informing your students of the meeting and how to attend. There are a lot of details in this tutorial, so remember to pause and rewind as often as you need. Open up a browser and go to umn.webex.com. You may need to log in, and you can do that in the upper right corner using your UMN credentials. We can now see we are logged in because our X500 shows in the upper right corner. Our next step is to click on the WebEx Meetings tab. When that tab loads, you can see that you can start a meeting immediately. But we want to set some options. Scheduling a meeting allows us to do that, so choose Schedule a Meeting from the left-hand menu. Because we want to set some options, we are going to the Advanced Schedule using the link near the top of the page. Our job now is to work through the nine pages of options shown here. I will visit each so you can see the options, but I will mainly set the options that should help you run a class lecture effectively. For required information, enter a meeting topic. I'm going to set my meeting room to not delete, which allows me to reuse the same meeting URL, just in case our extreme weather runs long and I need to do this again. Set the date and time and allow attendees to join 10 minutes early so students have time to work through any issues. I'm leaving the rest, as in this case there will be no recurrence of the event. For audio conference, set it to WebEx Audio. This should show two checked items that allow students to dial in if they cannot connect via their computer. Change the entry and exit tone to no tone. Under Invite Attendees, we are going to send a copy of the invitation to me, just so I can have the information about the meeting readily available. If you are going to have someone help you with the chat or have another presenter, you need to add them here so they can also be an alternate host. Click on Select Attendees. Put their name or X500 in the search box. Highlight their name on the left and click Alternate Host in the middle to move them to the Attendee box. Click OK in the bottom right corner. We can skip registration as it is set by default to none and agenda and welcome as we are doing a one-time thing. Under meeting options is where we will turn off everything but chat and video. I'm going to uncheck high quality video too just to lessen the load on students internet connections. Videos will allow students to see you and your PowerPoint. Chat will allow students to ask and answer questions, which is great for troubleshooting. Best practice would have someone in the room with you monitoring the chat to know questions and comments and get them to you when you have time to deal with them. It can be hard to do that on your own as it can be distracting and it scrolls past pretty quickly at times. For attendee privileges, we are going to remove all chat marks except the ones at the bottom of the list that allow students to chat. Finally, we are on Review, and here we click Schedule the Meeting. The new page shows the meeting. Here you can click to edit the settings or to see more information about the meeting or start the meeting. If you ever do go in and edit, be sure to click the Save Meeting button at the bottom of the options. For now, click on More Information. Copy that link, which I'm doing with Command C. That link is the one you want to send to students. Okay, so now on to the information you need to give students. I recommend doing this by making an announcement inside Canvas. In my class in Canvas, I click on Announcements and then click on Plus Announcement in the upper right. Here is my sample message. Pause here if you want to type it in for yourself into your announcement. Now that you have the text, we need to add the link to the meeting. Highlight the first instruction Click the link icon in the editor and paste the link I copied from WebEx. Audio problems are the most common problem with WebEx, so I will return to the WebEx page to copy the phone numbers students can use to dial into the meeting to hear the audio. Then I paste them into the announcement. Once you save your announcement, it will go out to all students through their notification preferences and show up in announcements in the class site. 
All that is left is to start the meeting when we are ready. Before you start your meeting, there are some key things we need to do. First, if you can, use an Ethernet connection. Using Wi-Fi can be a bit more problematic, so I'll give you some more recommendations on that later. You should probably also visit the bathroom, get yourself something to drink, and maybe even have some tissues nearby if you have a sneezing fit. Everyone has some version of these tips. You also need to get your presentation ready. So open up what you would usually use as your slideshow and have it in a window ready to go. Here's mine all set to be started. To start your meeting, go back to umn.webex.com. Once you are logged in, click on My Meetings in the left menu. Your meeting will be listed and you can click Start right from there. Clicking the name of the meeting will get you to the meeting information page which has the links, phone numbers, and edit option. Click Start to begin. You may have to install an extension. Once your meeting is generated, you will see your connection options. Leave audio as call using computer and for video change it to FaceTime camera or whatever camera you are using. Now is a good time to adjust your camera. Here's a Wi-Fi hint. If you know your Wi-Fi or internet connection is slow, choose to connect with no video. When you are set, click connect audio and video. Now that you are in, students will also be coming in. We want to set them up to be muted so they are not distracting. Click on Participant in the top menu and click on Mute on Entry to check it. You will also notice there is a Mute All right there, so if students ha happen to unmute their microphones, you can mute them. Let's get your slides set up to show to all participants by sharing your screen. If you move your mouse over your WebEx window, a series of buttons are available at the bottom. The first is Microphone, the second Video, and the third is Share Screen. Click that and choose Share Desktop. When you do that, you will see a little tab at the top of your screen saying you're sharing your screen. Now that you are sharing, you need to get your presentation showing on your monitor. For example, I have a PowerPoint presentation ready to go. So I'm going to have that window show, make it full screen, and start my presentation. At this point, you should start recording your meeting. Hover over the You're Sharing Your Screen tab and click on the record icon to start the recording. You are now all set to start your class. Let me show you what you can do when you are presenting. Hover over that You're Sharing Your Screen tab and you can see all the options for things you can do during your meeting. First, the Stop Sharing button on the left is what you click to stop sharing your screen. Students would just see your video. If you hit pause, Students will continue to see what you were sharing, but not anything you do now. So you could switch to something else. When you click the now orange resume button, a live feed of your screen will start again. Share is next, and it gives you lots of advanced options. Assign is more advanced options we don't need now. The microphone allows you to mute and unmute yourself. The video after that is for starting and stopping the video of your face. Recorder will allow you to pause the recording if you are sending students off to groups to work and they will return. You can also use it to stop recording when lecture is done. Participants opens or closes the participant list. The chat button next to it does the same for the chat window. Annotate is totally cool and you should try it, but it is more advanced than we need now. The three dots are last and give you more options. Here you can end the meeting and run a poll inside WebEx to break up your lecture. To end your meeting, I recommend you stop sharing and then thank everyone for giving this a try. Maybe take any last minute questions on chat. To end the meeting, hover over your WebEx window and at the bottom, buttons will show up. Click the X and you are done. Remember, it won't go well the first time, but it will go. If you recorded the meeting, you can go to webex.umn.com. Choose My Recorded Meetings from the left menu and click on Your Meeting on the list. You can copy the streaming recording link that is there and put it on your Canvas site or in an announcement to share it with your students. If you would like the recording captioned, please contact help at umn.edu and they can give you some options. Remember to relax and just do what you normally do for lecture. 
If something goes drastically wrong, call One Help at 612-301-4357. Thanks for watching and good luck.